and welcome to Felicious Reviews, a channel where we talk about all things beauty, which includes makeup, skincare, and sometimes hair care and nails. So if you're interested in any of those, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I post, which is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Today's video is going to be a review or a comparison of the Rare Beauty Multitasking Liquid Touch um, Makeup Sponge um, and the Beauty Blender, the very cult favorite Beauty Blender. I used one on each side and I have a whole comparison and similarities kind of thing waiting for you at uh, this time. Or you can keep watching to see some product info about the Rare Beauty Sponge and all of that and as well as the uh, application and how I used these and which part of my face are this sponge and which are these, this sponge. My favorite makeup sponge has always been the Beauty Blender, not just because it is so iconic and the first of its kind, but also because it's so bouncy, it's so soft, it's so easy to use. It is definitely the, the most bounciest, the most softest, the most um, lightweight makeup sponge that I've ever used. And I've used a lot I'm from various brands, drugstore, high-end, whatever's, whatever's. And I always come back to this. I always you know compare even my newer sponges whatever kind of sponges that i use to this um to this beauty blender the problem with this is that it is super expensive for a sponge it's 20 dollars for a sponge which sounds crazy um a lot of other sponges like from natasha denona um huda beauty um uh, even rare beauty over here are uh, are relatively cheaper than this so but again i've tried the natasha denona and that was like I was using a punching glove um, on my skin. It wasn't as bouncy, it wasn't as soft, it wasn't as lightweight. It felt like I was punching my face. So I don't want that. <laughs> uh, so which is why when I saw that this is quite cheaper and uh, it was on sale as well. I think it was, it was almost half its price. I was like, you know what, I'm going to try it out. Let's see. Um, it doesn't really have a really good. It doesn't really have a good rating on Sephora. So should I even get it? But then I thought that you know, let's try it out. Let's see why people don't like it, and let's try to figure out if I can make it work somehow because it's super cheap. <laughs> so I thought you know I'm always gonna compare all my makeup sponges to this this little little guy. So. Um, I thought let's do a little comparison as well as a review. I did ask you guys on my, uh, on my Instagram if you could poll whether you, whether you guys want a comparison or a solo review of this product and a lot of you said um, comparison but some of you also did uh, wanted a solo review. So what I thought I would do like a combo of it. I'm going to do a comparison and then also give my rating for, um, for the sponge. And I feel like the Beauty Blender is a makeup sponge that everybody who has ever used makeup has used a, ma a Beauty Blender at any point in their makeup journey, whether at the beginning or like in the middle or wherever. Um, they've always used one and they can always, you know, like get a better idea of, of other sponges when it's being compared to this one, you know what I mean? So I guess, so I just wanted to give you guys a better idea of this sponge by comparing it with this sponge. So before I get into the application or even the comparisons and similarities, um, let's talk about this sponge right now, just, just this sponge and uh, I guess get a bit of product info. This is supposed to be a plushy, plush kind of sponge with a diamond tip over here for precise application and customizable coverage. It's a latex-free formula, so it can uh, work with basically all kinds of finishes, creams, liquids, powders. The tip is designed to cover, you know, under eye areas or any tight spots that need uh, blending. The, flat, the flatter sides or the, uh, the middle part of this sponge is supposed to give you a seamless kind of blending while the rounded end or the rounded tip is for buffing or baking. I never bake. I do use um, I do use buffing kind of um, techniques but I never bake so I'm not going to even try that. For an airbrushed um, makeup look it's supposed to be used damp and I believe that's the way with all makeup sponges in general. I would always use a damp makeup sponge, not a dry makeup sponge. So if you're new to makeup and you don't know how to use a makeup sponge, always, always, always get them wet and then squeeze out any water and then use um, a paper towel to squeeze out any any excess remaining water so that you all you have is a very nice, soft, plushy, huge sponge. 
Um, I'm going to use both of these in the exact same way I would use on an any makeup day when I'm not reviewing any of these. Um, and I'm going to be using this, um, both of these with creams, liquids, powders, everything basically. So you guys can check all of that out in the application part. But you can also skip if you just want to jump to the comparison and similarities and the differences. This is the application part of this video and what I'm going to do today is use Rare Beauty Sponge over here and the Beauty Blender on this side. I'm going to use the exact same products, all primers and everything, all of the things are going to be the exact same. But I'm going to be using um, one sponge on the left side and then this sponge on this side. And this is also like a comparison to see how big it is compared to the Beauty Blender. It is quite significantly bigger, like it's wider as well and longer too. Obviously, it has a different shape to it as well. Um, and now I'm going to show you how it looks. This is these both both of these are dry, completely dry, and I'm going to get them a little damper um, so we can see how big this can get as compared to this. I like to squeeze the wet um, makeup sponges in a napkin so that all excess water is um squeezed out as well and so there's no wetness to them just a dampness and a little fluffiness and this is how big it gets and it's the same amount of fluff i would say but we're gonna get into that more in the similarities and comparison kind of uh, part and i just want to show you how porous they look after they're dampened up so that we can talk more about it in the later clip. Um, now what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to use a makeup brush to apply my makeup and then I'm going to um, buff everything in or blend everything in with a makeup sponge. So that's how I'm going to be using it and whatever I'm going to be using on my face is going to be over here so that it's easier for you to catch up as well. I'm going to give you a, a closer look in to, so you can see this um, the side where I did the uh, Rare Beauty sponge and then this one is the Beauty Blender. And now I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to go about with my day and I will come back um, and then I'll have a review waiting for you. Just keep watching. So now that we have seen the, the application and everything and how my makeup looks on both sides, um, let's talk about the similarities and differences. First of all, we're going to talk about similarities. And first of all is bounce. I feel like both of these are very bouncy. Both are, I've, I'm going to say an equal amount of bounciness to, uh, to both of them. Um, especially when they're damp, I feel like 
Both of these are just as plushy, just as soft, just as squishy. Number two is Porosity. They're both porous. Um, I mean, it, this also has pores. Maybe not as much as this does, but they both have pores, uh, which is how they also kind of absorb any excess product that you might have on your skin. Number three is Finishes. Both of these can work with a multiple types of finishes like creams, uh, liquids and powders um, So you you can definitely do your multitasking with any of these number four They both expand to a really large size and I'm gonna say it's it's the same amount I'm not gonna say that they're equal in size because they're not even equal in size when they're dry So they don't get to an equal size when it when they're damp but my point is that the amount that they both grow is also the same you know if it's getting twice as big this is also getting twice as big and and I kind of like when when this arrived in its box in this box over here I was kind of disappointed I was like why is it so small it was like in this and I was like this is so small this is so tiny how am I going to use this I'm supposed to get it damp and it's going to go larger and when I saw it go larger I was like wow that's a really decent size a really good size and if you want to see how that size is go back to the application clip number five is softness i feel like both are the exact same amount of softness um especially when they're damp and this was one of the things that was that had like a very negative rating on sephora for this a lot of people said that this isn't soft enough everybody said that this felt more like a dishwashing sponge which i totally 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 disagree with maybe those people are not using it damp because it does feel a little rough especially when it was like new out of the box it does it did feel like very very rough but then i ran underwater and then i got it damp and stuff and ever since then it's so plushy so maybe that was more like a first impression kind of thing and you had to kind of give it a chance for it to prove itself as a worthy makeup sponge number six is the blend I feel both of these did a very nice job of blending my makeup. On both of my sides, my makeup looked quite flawless, in my opinion. I don't know how it looked on camera. Um, but there was no splotchiness. There was no print of this porosity or whatever. There was like... So it, de it, it definitely did look airbrushed to me. And in reality, it did. I'm not sure how it picked up on camera, but... I was equally satisfied with both of these. Now I'm gonna go ahead with the differences list. And there are, even though they look so similar in use, not as like, you know, shape-wise, but they they do perform so similarly, they are quite different. And let's start off with the most obvious difference, which is the fact that this, the Rare Beauty Sponge has a lot of facets to it. So you can use, you know, like the tip for inner eye, you can, you know, inner portion of the eye, or you can use the flat base, or you can use the rounded base. Whereas with this, you can either get a tip or the rounded base. You really can't get much use out of this curved middle part. I mean, it's still useful. You can still use it over like this, but getting a flatter side is more much more effective in my opinion so you do get a lot of um uses out of this than you do with this number two is stains beauty blender stains much quicker much more than the rare beauty sponge does i'm not saying that this doesn't stain at all it does it does pick up some stain like I dabbed um some dabbed it on some lipstick like pink lipstick and it did pick up some pigment that didn't truly go away I, I don't know if you can tell over here but it did pick up some pigment that didn't completely go away but whereas this goes I don't know if you can tell on the pink but there is still like makeup absorbed over here from a long time ago it wasn't it's not recent at all I see a better look of how a beauty blender absorbs product and stains so much this is a perfect example this is a light colored uh special edition beauty blender that they released for macy's um kit like they had their soap thingy cleaner and 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 two beauty blenders with it and this is how much product it absorbs so it might depend on what color you're getting that absorb you know that that staining ability is going to depend on that but i feel like since it's 
pink it, the stains don't really show up as prominently as it does on um this neutral looking one but even as as that i mean look at it this has you can't really tell if ha if this has any stain on it and over here you can definitely tell there is so much stain on it and i tried to clean this like so much like i tried to clean it with every known thing that i possibly could and it didn't really go away and the staining point kind of brings me to number three which is clean um rare beauty cleans much 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 easier than the beauty blender and i'm saying that because beauty blender sometimes makes me want to cry when i'm when i'm cleaning this even if i'm using their own you know uh cleanser like the um, blender cleanser it doesn't really do the job like you see this you see this i used blender cleanser on it their liquid one as well as their solid one and it doesn't clean as good i don't know if it's the cleanser that's the problem or the sponges that's the problem but the only way i was able to get some stains out of this was by that cleansing oil and this is super easy to clean super easy you don't you don't even have to like rub it a lot on a on a mat or something it's just do a little bit of dab of the soap or whatever and it cleans beautifully number four is smoothness when you're using it side by side like i did in the application video i was like wow this is quite smooth like even being a porous makeup sponge this is quite smooth i mean there is no denying this is very much textured and very porous and it looks like it's going to give you a lot of texture and a lot of porosity on your like marks on your skin but it doesn't the the performance is exactly the same but if you want like a more aesthetically pleasing and a better sponge to hold and grip then obviously this is much smoother there's no denying that number five is price this is significantly cheaper than this i mean this is originally what 14 dollars but on, right now on sephora it's for seven dollars which is so much to be just like 13 dollars cheaper than this this is 20 dollars this is seven dollars I highly recommend that you use this, you buy this if you cannot afford to replace your beauty blender that often with like $20, just, just go ahead and buy this and use it as a damp sponge. Don't use it as a dry sponge because especially when it's like out of the box like that, it's going to feel much drier, much rougher than it does after like using it, you know, when it's dried after use, if that makes any sense. This by far is the cheapest high-end brand that I could get my hands on <laughs> even the Huda beauty um makeup sponge the boss thing i don't know what the name is but even that sponge i think basic b is the name even that sponge is like 16 or 14 dollars and then tasha denona was i believe 18 dollars and that is just like a punch on your face do not buy that that is probably the worst makeup sponge i've ever used ever meaning ever high-end drugstore included but yeah anyway so this is the cheapest high-end brand that i've ever gotten and i definitely think that it is more than worth more than worth its price if you're looking for a closest match to the beauty blender this is what you need this is what you what you're looking for this is this is everything basically do not let its roughness like initial roughness or like weird shape freak you out use it the way i showed you and your makeup is going to look beautiful with this the whole experience is going to be absolutely beautiful as well and now let's go ahead with my rating breakdown number one performance i'm going to give it a whole point because it does perform exactly the way it, it, a beauty blender does which is flawless number two is price i it deserves a whole point because this is super 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 cheap number three is longevity and convenience this is super convenient to use and you have so many like spaces to use your makeup you can use one part for creams you can use one part for uh you know liquids whatever whatever's um then there's recommendation and repurchase i definitely 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 recommend this to everybody especially those people who are trying to look for a better a cheaper alternative to the beauty blender and who cannot afford to keep purchasing 20 dollars off 20 dollars for one sponge so 
I suggest you switch to this. Um, and then there is special features. I'm going to give it half a point because I agree with some of what the negative comments were about its roughness. It is quite rough, especially when it's out of the box. It does give you a bad first impression of itself, but it does redeem itself when you actually use it the correct way when it's meant to be used. Try it out the way I showed you in the application video and let me know what your thoughts are. If you've tried this before and it did not work for you, let me know what you were doing when you were using it. Did you use it dry? Did you use it damp? Um, also, if you did use it and you do like it, let other people know in the comments how you used it and why you like it. Um, and if you have any other makeup sponge that is as good as the Beauty Blender or as soft as the Beauty, Beauty Blender, then let me know in the comments as well so I can also try that out. Uh, but for me, this is as far as as close as I can get to a beauty blender match. Uh, but that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. Stay tuned for my next video where I'm going to review the Perlis uh, Matcha Green Tea Antioxidant Priming Moisturizer or hang back and watch one of my older videos.